Okay, it's this integral again, and last time we did this with tricks up already. However, some of you guys might be disappointed because we couldn't do this with the partial fraction decomposition method, right? It's okay because I will show you another way to do it, and it also has some kind of flavor of partial fraction. This is called the Ostrogradsky method. What it says is the following. If you want to integrate a rational function, of course, p of x and q of x are polynomials, and under the assumption that the degree on the top is less than the degree on the bottom, if not, just do long division as usual, right? Anyway, this is equal to the first part is the, the first part of the answer already. P1 of x over q1 of x, and I will tell you guys what p1q1s are, all right? And then we add it with another integral, an integral of p2 of x over q2 of x dx. It's kind of like partial fraction along with like integration by parts because the first part is, you know, the first part of the answer, and then we still have to add it with another integral, right? So that's kind of like the integration by part style. And it's also similar to the partial fraction style because of the following. First of all, I will have to explain to you guys the Q1 and then the Q2. Q1 of x is just the greatest common factor of the original Q of x and also its derivative. So Q of x and Q prime of x. And then the Q2 is just the remaining part. You can look at this as original denominator, namely q of x, divided by q1, all right? And I'll work this out with that example over there. And the last part is, what is, this is supposed to be 3, by the way. Anyway, p1 and p2, they are just some polynomials. And in fact, we don't know what they are yet. So I will tell you, they are just uh, known polynomials, and we're going to first set it up as one degree less than these two denominators, and we are going to use a determinant coefficient method to figure out p1 and p2. With that being said, let me show you how we are going to do this, okay? First of all, the good thing is that on the top, we just have a 1. So that's p of x, original p of x. It's not p1 nor p2, okay? Well, focus on the denominator first. You see that the denominator, I will just look at that as q of x, which is 1 plus x squared and then squared, right? Okay, what it says right here, I have to get its derivative. So just differentiate this guy the usual way. Therefore, q prime of x, you see that, bring the 2 to the front, so we have 2 times 1 plus x squared, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. And don't forget the chain rule. Use the chain loop to multiply by the derivative of 1 plus x squared, and that is 2x. So you see, this is just 4x times 1 plus x squared. And with that being said, let's figure out what q1 is. q1 is just the greatest common factor of q and q prime, right? That's what it says. And you see that right here, we have this factor, 1 plus x squared, and then to a second power. And then for q prime, we also have this factor, 1 plus x squared. Therefore, the greatest common factor is just 1 plus x squared, right? So let me just write it down, 1 plus x squared to the first power, and that is q1. Next, we'll have to figure out q2. q2 is just pretty much the remaining part. If you break down the original, which is that, I will just write this down as well. You can look at this as q2 of x equals to the original, which is 1 plus x squared, squared, and then divided by q1. So divided by parentheses 1 plus x squared, and you know the power cancel out, we'll have one more left. So it just happened to be q1 and q2 are the same, right? And that is 1 plus x squared. Okay, that figures out the q1 and q2. And here is the deal. The original integral now, I'll just put it down here, it's going to be well, I'm going to put down q1 right here, isn't it? I'll put this down, okay? So I'll write it down, 1 plus x squared, like that. And we will add another integral, and because I know q2 already, so I will also put that down over this q2, which is 1 plus x squared. And this is an integral. Well, on the top, as I said it right here, p1 and p2, they are just polynomials, and we don't know what it is yet. The only thing we know, 
is that this and that has to be exactly one degree than the denominators, okay? This is a quadratic. So on the top, we must have a linear, and I'll just write it down as ax plus b. We don't know the coefficients yet, and we'll figure it out later on, okay? That's the unknown. That's the indeterminate coefficient part. And likewise, if you look at this, well, on the bottom, it's a quadratic. On the top, it has to be a linear. So I will write it down as cx plus d. So this is what we have. Once again, this is equal to that. And this is pretty much the setup, all right? So it's kind of like partial fraction, isn't it? OK, as you can see, I don't have enough space. I'm going to erase things down. So and now this is what we have. And notice that we broke down the original integral into the first part of the answer right here already, and then another integral. And this integral seems to be easier than the original, right? Well, we still have to figure out A, B, C, and D. And this is the part that I said it seems like the partial fraction, right? Very similar style. Well, to figure out A, B, C, and D, this is an equation with integrals. Well, to get rid of integrals, we can just differentiate. Therefore, we'll just look at this and differentiate across, right? So d dx all the way across. And the beauty of this is that when we differentiate an integral right here, they cancel out, right? So we will just first have 1 over, this is parentheses, 1 plus x squared, and then squared. And that's it. Well, for the next one, this was an integral. So we do have to actually differentiate this guy. And to differentiate this, we have to use the quotient rule. So with that being said, we are going to square the denominator. So let's put that down, 1 plus x squared, and then square, because the quotient rule says so. And we will have the bottom one, which is 1 plus x squared, times the derivative of the top. The derivative of ax plus b is just a. And the quotient rule says we are going to subtract the top, deriv the top right here, the top function, which is ax plus b times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 2x. So let's multiply by 2x like this. So this part is the derivative of the middle right, right here. And lastly, we are going to differentiate this integral. Of course, they cancel out, so that's great. So we add it with just cx plus d over 1 plus x squared, like that. We did some work right here, and then the rest is just cancel things out, which is great. OK. How did we do the A, B, C, D back in the traditional partial fraction? <laughs> Same thing right here as well, okay? We just multiply everything by the lowest common denominator and hope for the best. Anyway. OK, we are ready to finish this up. As we can see, this is actually the first part of the answer already, OK? So we have 1 half times x on the top. And let me just put down the 1 half right here. And we have the x on the top like this over that in the denominator. I'll put a parentheses, 1 plus x squared, OK? Because I just brought out the 1 half right here. So the 1 half, you have to multiply the 2 with the denominator, right? But anyway, this is the first part of the answer. Next, we have to add it with. And you know this 1 half, this is 0, so it doesn't matter. Let me just write down the 1 half all the way in the front, because that's a constant multiple. We have to still integrate. Now I just have a 1 on the top over 1 plus x squared dx, OK? And at the end, you know this is going to be x on the top right here over 
2 parentheses 1 plus x squared. That's the first part of the answer already. And then we add it with 1 half, it's still 1 half. What's this? This is just the inverse tangent, right? That's the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we have the inverse tangent of x. And we are done just like how we did it with tricks up earlier. So this is for sure the answer as well. So this method is really cool, isn't it? Oh, yo. You're on YouTube now. Wow. So let me know, you guys, do you guys like this Oreo more or the other Oreo more? Or maybe the real Oreo? Ooh. As in the cookie? Yep. <laughs>